And God is going to wipe these people out and start over with Moses. But Moses has compassion, even for people like the children of Israel. Can you imagine what they just seen with their very eyes? God decimate Egypt. And this idol that they created is an idol that they had seen in Egypt. They could not protect the Egyptians. God has just decimated them. And they'd rather have that idol than God. Think about it. If Moses can have compassion for the children of Israel, why can't we have compassion for those in Bigelman, those in the surrounding areas, those in Kansas, Nebraska, and Colorado? Why do we not have compassion for them? If God can have compassion for these people. So fourthly, we should be about the work of God because of compassion for those around us. Now there are many who reject God's call to work and I think there are three main reasons for this rejection of God's call to witness, to be about the work of God. First, many do not have a healthy vision for evangelism. I guess we could say they have a lack of vision. A lack of vision. What is a healthy vision for evangelism? Now I'm going to make it as simple as I can. I've got a neighbor. Let's say I have a neighbor next door. Let's just say that neighbor doesn't know Christ. Let me go to that neighbor. Lead them toward Christ. Maybe they'll come to Christ and then they'll lead another neighbor and another neighbor and it'll snowball. And people will come to the Lord. We will transform our town for the Lord. What is a healthy vision for, for evangelism? And I think many reject God's call to work because they don't have a healthy vision for evangelism. Secondly, many carry on in a defeated lifestyle, never enjoying the victorious life. If you walk around defeated, you will never enjoy a victorious life. If we allow sin to come back into our life and destroy us and ravish us, and you can see a defeated life when someone walks up to you, you can see it on their face. Their jaws only clench. They can't get their teeth apart. They're defeated. They've been destroyed, ravaged by sin, and the old ways come back in. And they begin to live in those old ways, the old attitudes that they were before they were saved come back. And they don't enjoy the victorious life of Christ that you can live. Jesus came that we might have life and have it abundantly. And they're not living that, so they reject call, God's call to be a witness. And third, many never bear the fruit of God's Spirit. They live a fruitless life. Now let me stop here. Again, if there's no fruit in your life whatsoever, you're not a Christian. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is placed in your life, and the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. If none of that's in your life, you're not a Christian. Even if you think you are, you're not a believer. But it can be in someone's life who's a believer, and they'll be immature, not maturing in the faith, and not growing. Fruit needs to grow in your life. And someone who's not growing, who's living a fruitless life, who, who is a Christian, will reject God's call to be a witness, to work in the kingdom of God. Now verses 8 through 12 reveal a problem here in our text. Now look at verses 8 and 9 here first. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard told his foreman, call the workers and give them their pay, starting with the last and ending with the first. When those who were hired came, uh, about five came, they each received one denarius. We see here that everyone is being paid for their work. It seems that there's no problem here. But I find it extremely interesting that he starts with the last. He tells the foreman to start with the last person who came to work and move up to the first. Now I can see where this might pose. A problem. Me and my thinking and my human thinking. If I hire people and I hire people, I've had businesses and I've worked for businesses where I hire people. And again, I probably wouldn't think in my mind and my heart the person who's worked all day long and I hired somebody at lunch or after or maybe an hour and paid the first person first who was hired last. I probably wouldn't even think to do that. Born again believers will be rewarded by God's standards. And according to God's standards, not according to man's standard, it's not what I think is the right way. It's what God thinks is the right way.
way. So often, that is an excuse. You'll hear this. I don't know how often I've heard this. Well, I don't want to believe in God. I don't want to trust in Jesus Christ because I couldn't serve a God who doesn't think like me, who would not pay the first person first. An example. Who would do this or do that. I, I can't serve a God like that. And so we think we can bring God down to our level. That God's supposed to think like me because I've got it right. I've got the right way. If God will just do it my way, then He'll be right too. It doesn't work that way. He is God. He is creator. He is maker. He creates the rules and the way things go. Not us. So what was the problem? What was the complaint here? Look at verses 10 through 12. So when the first ones came, they assumed they would get more, but they also received a denarius each. When they received it, they began to complain to the landlord. <coughs> These last men put in one hour, and you made them equal to us who bore the burden of the day and the burning heat. Those that had worked all day long received the same day as those who had worked only part-time. And of course, those that worked one hour, I would not even call that part-time. They had worked an hour, and they all received the same day. Now, verses 13 through 16 reveal the implication of the wages in our text. Verse 13, he replied to one of them, Friend, I'm doing you no wrong. Didn't you agree with me on a denarius? In this verse, the landowner reminds the complaining workers of what they had agreed to and assures them that he's doing them no wrong. Back in verse 2 of this parable, they were hired at 6 a.m. and they were promised a denarius. That's what I've agreed with, with you. You agree on that. The master is telling the servant or the worker. The landowner is telling the worker. You agree for the denarius. A day's wages, a typical day's wages. These workers should not have concerned themselves with what others were paying. They should not have concerned themselves with others' business, when they were hired, how they were paid. That was none of their business. They agreed to a denarius. Verse 14. Take what's yours and go. I want to give this last man the same as I gave you. The landowner paid what he owed. He tells the laborer to take what was promised and go. Take what I've given you and go. The landowner is just. He paid what he owed. God is just. And he will always be just. He will be just to sinners. Now I know that we as believers are sinners saved by grace. But I'm talking about sinners who have rejected Jesus Christ, who have never received Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. God will be just with them. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 states, Then I saw a great white throne in Him who was seated on it. From His presence, earth and sky fled, fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead and the great and small standing before the throne, and the books were opened. Then another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged by what was written in the books according to what they had done. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one of them, according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. If anyone's name was not written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. God will be just to those who reject His Son. And justice requires eternity separated from God in a literal hell. Jesus taught on hell double what He taught on heaven. Hell is real. And God will punish those who reject His Son, who reject His way of salvation. You cannot come any other way but through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto me but by the Father. He didn't say you could come through Buddha or anyone else. He said you come through His Son, Jesus Christ. God will always be just to sinners. God will be just to the believer. Those who believe in His Son, Jesus Christ. Those who trust Him as their Lord and their Savior. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 says, For we must all, and this is Paul the Apostle, who wrote over half the New Testament, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. This is the theme of seat here. So that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Now, 